exciting, Whitney. Cool. Sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and share my screen with y'all. Okay. Can you see that OK? Yes. It's perfect. It's a okay. beautiful cool. building over there in the Greensboro. Cool. OK, perfect. Just want to make sure. Um, well, hey, everyone. My name is Whitney Belk. I am um, one of the admissions counselors at UNC Greensboro. I'm excited to be with y'all today uh, to tell you a little bit more about UNCG and a little bit about what makes us unique and hopefully just allow you to learn a little bit more. Um, in my role, I help all the students um, specifically from Cabarrus County uh, learn more, obviously about the university, but also with the admissions and application process as well. I'm so happy to be a resource for y'all. Um, also hope you're doing well during this kind of uncertain and crazy time that we are facing right now. I know that it's changed the way of life for uh, for everybody, for high school students and for us at the college level and um, personally. So again, hope y'all are all doing well and um, excited to at least be able to to visit with you in this capacity today. All right, so I want to share a little bit more about who we are as an institution. I think that um, again, some people's familiarity are going to be a little bit more maybe than UNCG than others. Um, so I want to make sure that I provide just kind of a general overview and then open it up for questions um, within the next little bit too. So at UNCG, kind of our tagline is to help students find their way here. And ultimately, it's all about finding your way. And finding your way means finding your academic passions, your educational passions, uh, finding your people, finding those who you can connect with, um, and then helping ultimately find your kind of home away from home. So again, that's going to look different for every student in the college search process, and then ultimately once you become a student at UNCG as well. I want to um, start off with a quick little video to help y'all learn a little bit more about us and just to get a little bit of, of a visual, visual of who we are. OK, so um, before I talk about kind of who we are as an institution now, I want to talk about kind of how we developed into the institution that we are today. Uh, UNC Greensboro was initially founded as a women's institution and a women's college back in the 1890s. Um, we are now co-educational and have been since the 1960s, um, but kind of neat that we have that deep rooted history as um, one of the you know, first women's colleges in the state of North Carolina. Um, in the 1930s, we joined with two other UNC system schools, uh, UNC Chapel Hill and NC State, to create the UNC system that we are a part of today. So you're probably familiar with um, many of the, the 16 different public institutions in the UNC system, but again, it's, it's great that we have that deep-rooted history within our state and have been um, one of the original public institutions serving North Carolina students. Um, as of 2017, and currently we have over 20,000 students enrolled at the university, we have about 16,000 students working on their bachelor's degrees, um, and then about 4,000, a little over 4,000 students working on master's and doctoral programs. So we'll go into some of those undergraduate programs a little bit later, um, but great to kind of see that transition and how we've developed over the years. 
I want to talk before we dig into uh, the academic pieces, I want to talk a little bit about why UNCG, kind of what makes us uh, unique and what is most important to us at the university. And there are kind of three things that, that typically come to mind. The first one is going to be opportunity. Um, we have been ranked number one at, within social mobility for the past several years. So again, providing that opportunity for students to to come and educate themselves and um, and be great members of our society. We also provide the opportunity to conduct undergraduate research at the institution. We are an undergraduate research institution, um, so that's something that as a medium to larger size institution with over 125 different undergraduate degree programs, we have over 100 masters and doctoral programs, which really opens opportunities for undergraduate students to get involved in that research. And then that hands on learning, that's a huge important component to us and we feel that you know, until you really dive deep into a specific area of study and have that hands on learning, you're not really sure. So kind of getting that on the front end of your experience and making sure those opportunities are accessible. Also senior level faculty instruction under excellence. Um, that's one thing that we again appreciate about our faculty members um, having, you know, no teacher assistants or graduate students teaching our students really getting that hands on experience with faculty members who are leaders in their field and one of my favorite professors I was talking to him last week and he's been there for many years and he said, you know, quite frankly, a lot of our faculty members could be making a lot more money doing other things, but they are here and they're passionate about our students and they um, want, they appreciate that UNCG provides those smaller class sizes to get to work with those students hands on. And then the, uh, excuse me, collaboration uh, with the Greensboro community. That's something that we really appreciate about our campus too. We are an urban campus, less than a half mile from downtown Greensboro. So really getting connected uh, within the city too. And then last but not least, impact. Um, this is something that we, we find that our students are um, creating big impacts and big splashes with, with their futures. Um, our students, even though it's not a priority or, um, or excuse me, not a requirement of our students, we find that community service is a priority for our students, um, logging more than a million hours of community service work yearly. Um, and then we find that because our students are so uh, well rounded and because we are such a diverse institution, we are one of the most diverse schools in the state of North Carolina, non, that's a non HBCU and um, providing that global perspective to students. We find that um, that is very impactful to different companies and graduate schools too, who are actively coming to recruit our students. So those are kind of the three highlights that I think you'll see kind of trending throughout our time together. I also want to mention um, this UNCG CARES. UNCG CARES is an office that is a part of our student affairs office and um, what we really do at UNCG and I think if you speak with students who have attended the university or members of our community now, uh, really that is going to be something that is instilled in them. Um, really having making students aware of how they you know, provide care and support um, to other students and other people. We do outreach and education um, about how to identify for us, for as faculty and staff members, to notice a student who may need support. There are workshops for students to um, educate them on bystander intervention and speaking up for others. Um, and then also there's a network of campus resources that are there. So that's everything from you know, academic support or transitional support. Um, or professional support all the way to a student food pantry if that's something where students see a need. So again, there's quite a wide uh, spectrum, but again here I think you'll see with with UNCG CARES that is also kind of a trend within our campus community too. All right, obviously as an institution of higher learning, um, our main purpose is to, to educate students and provide um, them the best academic experience possible. So uh, you'll see here within our top undergraduate majors, we'll go through all 125 um, a little bit later and, and kind of it, it'll just kind of inform you on what opportunities are available, but I think it's interesting to see just the top 10 most popular undergraduate areas of study. Um, these are based off of how many students we graduate per year out of these specific academic academic programs. So at the end of a student's time with us at the university, we typically graduate the most business administration, then nursing and then so on. This does change a little bit every year based off of, um, you know, students interest in um, job markets and 
all of that, as you can imagine, interests may change. But what I do appreciate about this list is that they're they're all pretty different. Um, there are a few social sciences in there. You have kinesiology, that sports medicine, exercise science, um, from then nursing, then communication studies and supply chain management. So again, based off of the needs and our, the interest of our students, that may change. But again, that kind of diversity within those programs is great. Um, our average class size at UNC Greensboro is 27 students and our student to faculty ratio is 20 to 1. Um, I did mention some of that undergraduate research opportunities earlier, and that is something again that you're going to find an important part for students. And again, as as a high school student, that did not mean you know much to me, and I wasn't sure the opportunities that that would provide. But really, that kind of um, equates to that hands-on learning and, and working closely with your faculty members. Service hours, um, but I do want to touch on the studying abroad. Um, as I mentioned a, a few slides ago. Um, as a diverse institution, we think that perspective is super important. We want students to, to have that global perspective and, and, and have that awareness. And so one way that we do that is with studying abroad. And obviously that, that looks a little bit different during COVID right now, but we want students to come to UNCG, get settled in Greensboro, love it, but then we want them to again have that international experience. So. What's cool about most of our programs is that they're exchange programs, so students will just pay their UNCG tuition, receive their, some, their same aid and scholarships opportunities. A student abroad will pay their tuition and then you'll just switch places. So even for students who may be studying abroad is not a priority for your college experience. You'll still have that international component and that global perspective kind of intertwined. Um, and we do have one of the one of the largest study abroad programs um, within the state of North Carolina. I think that has a lot to do with with the partnerships and um, we have a, a awesome major on campus that, um, that's called languages, literatures and cultures. And I, so I think that with that program too, that has kind of expanded study abroad opportunities. Um, and last but not least, I want to mention the Honors College. This is something that I know some students going into a college or university are familiar with what an Honors College is, some are not. And that's something that there's also some fear of, OK, do, is that something I should be involved with or am I ready to do that? Um, and that's something that it, it's totally a personal preference, but just as there are different honors, courses and AP courses and dual enrollment courses that you can take in high school. There's also the opportunity at the college level to get a little bit more in depth um, academic experience. And it's not that it's necessarily more work or more. Um, it's just going to be a little bit deeper digging into maybe more theory and more research and a little bit more specific um, areas of study. So instead of you know studying maybe history in general, you might be studying more of a specific time in history and really digging deep. So um, again, that's something to always consider if you are looking for more of an in-depth experience. Um, students, when they apply to UNC Greensboro, we will extend an invitation to apply if you meet those specific requirements. Um, I do find that comparatively to other institutions, our Honors College is, is accessible for students. Um, they don't have to meet um, as, you know, a lot of different indicators there are just you can eat just the GPA just the test score so um, if you are interested in learning more again it, for us it's called the Lloyd International Honors College um, and there is that international in that title because um, we do provide those students the opportunity and a stipend to study abroad so again kind of weaving in that experience um, but again if you have specific interest in that we actually did a session last night for a virtual open house um, that is it's on our website where we had um, the director of that program and um, another student services member that kind of went through that. So would love to, to educate you more about that um, on our website too. All right, so looking at the different degree programs that we offer, as I mentioned um, with so many different degree programs, this is super overwhelming and I totally understand that. Um, I think that even for me as an undergraduate student going in, I didn't really know what opportunities were available. Like both my parents were teachers and so that was kind of like, OK, I want to do education. And um, but I think until you really dig deep and, and sit in the classroom or talk to faculty members or talk to your advisor, it's a lot of times you don't know what these areas, what these areas are. So really dig deep and, and look and 
but before we dig you know into these i want to make sure that that you are aware that you can come in as undecided we do not require students to come in um, within a specific area we call that exploratory studies to provide students the opportunity to do just that just to explore um, so all of our majors are organized into different um, schools or colleges within the university so you'll see here the Bryan School of Business um, that is going to be the home to our most popular major business administration that fashion design program is, is often uh, popular as well uh, marketing international business I um, mean one po important point to note about our Bryan School of Business is that it's actually ranked and within the top one percent of business schools in the whole country and the reason that is is because we have a dual accreditation um, within accounting and business. So um, there's only, again, a 1% of institutions that have both of those dual accreditations. Um, so that's something, again, as a high school student, um, you know, wouldn't have, would, I wouldn't quite have fully been able to get my head around that, but ultimately that means opportunities for you later on. Within the College Division I Performing Arts, that's going to be the home to all of those related areas, dance, drama, music, studio art. We are well known for some of those areas um, as far as the performance and the beauty of it is for students who are not talented in those areas like me. You can go appreciate the different shows and, um, and have the opportunity to get connected in that way. Um, and you'll see the, the little star, the asterisk beside those. That means um, for any of these programs listed that there is some type of secondary admissions requirement. So, Again, you can apply to the university and you could put kinesiology under the School of Health and Human Sciences on your application, but know that once you get to UNCG, you will have to apply directly to that program. Um, and typically for the visual and performing arts, there's typically an audition or a portfolio or something of that nature involved. Whereas for some of the other ones listed on the other side, like speech pathology and audiology or social work, it may just be specific prerequisites that you have to perform um, of a certain level in. Somewhere on the next page, the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, that's going to be the home to a lot of those core subjects that you're likely taking now. Some uh, popular ones in there too are going to be those social sciences that you saw earlier, um, communication studies, uh, computer science, interior design, that languages, literatures, and cultures that I mentioned earlier, um, and then political science too. So um, again, so wide variety there um, within the School of Nursing. That's going to be one of our most popular, but also one of our most competitive programs too. Um, you see it has that asterisk, so that does mean that there is a secondary admissions requirement that students have to uh, have to apply to be a part of that program. Um, and then with the School of Education, you'll see those opportunities there. Um, we get a lot of questions about with professions in deafness. We have a great American Sign Language program and there's an information science program within the School of Ed, which is for uh, in individuals looking for to dig deeper into like educational data, all that kind of stuff. Um, last but not least, those pre-professional programs for any students who are interested in pursuing uh, any type of those professional schools. Those are going to be tracks or concentrations that students have the opportunity to pursue. What the thing to keep in mind about these is that you will major in one of the degree programs listed um, elsewhere on the slide and then you'll be on this pre professional track. So important to keep in mind for like pre physical therapy. A lot of those students may major in like kinesiology as a, you know, with since that's exercise science or a biology or some of the sciences, but then they're on the pre physical therapy track in order to get those prerequisites for um, for PT school. So the biggest takeaway here is that you don't know what you have to do. It's completely OK, um, and also that you'll have an academic advisor who helps you navigate this whole process. Separate from academic advising, we also have a students first office that is the home to um, it's just like general academic advising within the university. So you'll kind of have multiple different people and people in your corner trying to help you figure all this out. Location wise, most people are familiar with our location um, in Greensboro, but I think it's kind of cool to see big picture. We are located within the center of the state of North Carolina, but also within the center of the East Coast. Um, so I really appreciate that about our campus and opens up a lot of opportunities for students um, with different like headquarters and companies that are located in our area. And then also people being drawn to to this area in general um, from 78 countries and 48 states or where or, excuse me, 46 states where our students are represented. And a little bit about our city as well. Um, this is something that any college or university that you attend getting um, familiar with the city because that's a huge important part of of what makes your experience too. 
Again, with Greensboro being the third largest city in North Carolina, um, that is something that provides a lot of opportunity for students. Um, even though we're not called Greensboro because we're a green city, we very much are with different trails and greenways um, for our students to get, be active and get involved. Within the downtown area, that's where um, are the different shops and restaurants and festivals and parks are going to be located. We then have our campus, which is about 250 acres uh, right there, kind of on the other side of the city. And then right on the other side, um, kind of the, on the other piece of, of the city is where you have Friendly Shopping Center, which that's where we have, there's like the Apple Store for any your Apple product needs, um, Cheesecake Factory, Old Navy, all that kind of stuff. So it's cool that our, our campus is, is situated in between this like cool, historical, trendy downtown. Then you have our campus and then you have this awesome shopping. And not only with that, we have the Greensboro Coliseum, which is less than a half mile from downtown Greensboro, or excuse me, from our campus. Um, and that's gonna be where our division one basketball team plays. Um, I've also seen several different cool people in concert there. I saw Taylor Swift there one time, Tim McGraw. So kind of cool that you may go to like a D1 basketball game for UNCG one night. And then the next night there's this like international world tour, which is really cool. Um, as I mentioned, definitely have historical aspect too. We're home of the International Civil Rights Museum. And then also, as I mentioned, with our location, um, providing you know students the opportunity um, to work with different head, having different headquarters. Um, and also, if you haven't had the chance to check out Greensboro, um, if you walk around downtown, you'll see lots of little statues with like literal like blue jeans and they're like decorated all funky it's because we have the headquarters of wrangler jeans so that's why you'll see all the jeans um, around campus and uh, around our city too all right a little bit about involvement um, again this is going to be something anywhere you attend anywhere you are interested in please 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 get involved that's something any admissions counselor is going to tell you and to really push you no matter where you go there's this, you know, the a big piece of any school that you choose is going to be based off of your academic needs. But there's also this big portion of the city and your involvement too, um, and, and really making the most of that. We find that a lot of different employers or graduate school, um, graduate schools who are, you know, reviewing our students, um, that they are provided a lot of opportunities outside the classroom too with leadership experiences and, and getting plugged in. And again, this is a huge social aspect too. So I looked, uh, I was looking yesterday, I was looking up for some specific clubs that a student was looking for. And as of yesterday, we have 369 clubs and organizations. So again, there's a lot to choose from ones that I did not even know existed. Um, and if there's one that you, you know, want to do that that is not existent yet, you can always add that to the list. Um, but again, that's going to be you know, Greek life, some academic honor societies and organizations, a lot of those pre-professional programs. Um, some again, maybe based off of your academics. Um, some are service oriented. We also have a, a large Kaplan Center for Wellness, which is where the fitness classes take place. Um, and what's cool about there's not a specific picture in this slideshow about it, but I do want to mention because it's such a cool place. Um, it's it was just opened about four years ago um, and it has multiple different basketball courts. It has the freeway areas. Um, it has all the machinery it has an Olympic sized pool, um, but it also it's called Center for Wellness. So it has a lot more than that, too. There's like these like pods that you can like it's called a nap pod and you could literally go take a nap in this thing um, again meeting needs for you know physical and uh, emotional and mental health too is something that we really promote you can meet with a nutritionist there if that's something that you're interested in so again really bringing those multiple different experiences to life and I know I uh, mentioned earlier we are division one athletics we have 17 division one teams all of our facilities and um, all the fields and all that kind of good stuff are going to be located on our campus within that 250 acres, um, except for the Greensboro Coliseum, of which students can can walk to less than a half mile away. Um, for a lot of the big games, they'll kind of start and do like a march across the city, which is kind of cool um, over to to the basketball games. Um, but again, you can see that we there's such a wide variety and and very well attended at the university too. All right, before we jump into admissions and all that kind of fun stuff, which is where I come in, I also want to talk about career and professional development. 
Um, these things are also too important to consider at any institution that you're looking for. And again, kind of big picture, we find that that our students um, are, are, are companies and act in employers and um, different graduate schools are drawn to our students because not only are we have a wide variety of different majors and academic programs, but also because of our um, our diversity, our campus is is really an example of how the real world is. And so we find that our students are are very um, prepared and and educated in that way and really go getters. And so we find that with these career fairs, a lot of companies and employers are, are looking for that. So we hold different career fairs each year. Uh, we There's different companies that are actively recruiting our students. And we have a, a portal called Handshake, which is kind of like LinkedIn, where you can go in and, and look at different job opportunities. And even as an underclassman, just to kind of say, OK, if I was potentially changed my major to this or if, if I majored in this, what would what would a company be looking for as I start to graduate? So what's great about this office is they are located right beside Chick-fil-A. So students know exactly where the career and professional development office is, because whenever you go to Chick-fil-A on campus, it's going to be right there. So while you're waiting in line, you can look at all the postings and all the listings that's going on. Um, and speaking of food, too, I wanted to point that out. Um, uh, I guess it was last year, I guess um, we were there was a survey among the UNC system um, where they did different different surveys and test out the food of the UNC system and we were actually ranked number one. So kind of a fun fact. Um, so if you that's an important part of any college campus too. So we have our Fountain View Dining Hall, um, which is where that is going to be located with your traditional where you go and swipe your card in all you can eat area. Then we have our um, more of our food court areas, which is going to be that Chick-fil-A, Salsaritas, Starbucks, your Bojangles, all that kind of all that kind of fun stuff. And then also being in an urban setting in the city too um, provides tons of different opportunities for food too. So I wanted to put that plug in there too because a lot of students again familiar with Chick-fil-A. So you're going to be familiar with the career and professional development office too. All right, I want to talk about cost because um, as you all are aware, I mean, it, the educational experience it is a total investment and we we want to make sure that students are aware of what opportunities are available and kind of what this looks like overall. Um, for what to expect, you can see here with our tuition and fees, this is going to be per academic year um, or about seven thousand four hundred dollars for the for the full academic year. Um, if students choose to live on campus, we do not require our freshmen or any of our students to live on campus, uh, but about about 80 percent of our first year students do choose to live on campus. But this is going to be the cost for um, your standard kind of traditional dorm room is about fifty six hundred dollars. And then if you live on campus, you also will be required to have a meal plan of some sort. As you can imagine, though, with the room and board, it depends on where you live based off of the cost. Same with meal plan, depending on what type of meal plan you have, there are going to be varied costs involved. So um, you'll want to make sure that, you know, again, these costs are going to vary a little bit, but typically the, the average uh, cost of attendance for these kind of three specific things that students are going to be charged by the university um, is about 16 to $17,000. You'll see, though, on the average cost over here per year, um, that does include a, an additional, you know, four to three, three to four thousand um, dollars, with the average cost being about twenty thousand. That's because we know that there are going to be other expenses and other costs that are involved, such as your books and supplies. That's something that is going to be included. Um, if students choose to park on campus, our freshmen can have a car on campus, so you may want a parking pass on campus. You also are going to need some cool stuff for your dorm and some toiletries and all that kind of fun stuff. So again, the the what to, under the what to expect, those are the three kind of points that you're going to be that are going to the institution is going to charge you kind of expected cost. Um, but then knowing that, you know, there may be some additional cost in there included, but still below the US public average as well as the North Carolina in state average as well. We also encourage all of our students to apply for financial aid, um, completing the FAFSA. That's something that opens up October 1st every year. Um, so seniors, that is open now. I'm sure you've heard all about it um, and are probably tired of hearing about it at this point sometimes, um, but make sure that you you go ahead and fill that out. 
Um, just as we have a, a kind of application priority deadline, which I'll talk about in a minute, UNC Greensboro also has a priority deadline to submit the FAFSA. So to receive the most, the highest um, aid possible, we encourage all of our students to apply and or submit that FAFSA application to us uh, by January 15th. And so that's something that, again, make sure that you, if you're applying to UNCG, make sure you do it by January 15th for the FAFSA. Um, for admissions purposes, um, this is something that we, UNCG has always done a holistic review process, but more than ever, this is something that we are going to do to be doing this year um, as because of the, the for the 2021 term, any students applying for that test scores are going to be optional. However, if students would still like to submit their test scores, you are welcome to do that. Um, we will consider them if we get them and they may be lower than our averages and they may not help your you know admission then we are not going to pay attention to them um so that is something that again some students you know at this time last year went ahead and submitted scores anticipating that those would be looked at um, but as that as that has changed over time um, we're going to make sure that we you know consider you and in, in for admission in the best ways that represent represent you um, for the average GPA, you'll see that is going to be a 3.74. Again, that is an average. So some students um, may be, again, below that. Some students are going to be above that. Um, the biggest thing to know is that we are going to become familiar with you as a student and your grades kind of where you are. We are going to be especially um, I've worked with students from your school and and I'm familiar with you know classes that are offered and you know your there's a school profile that's involved and again we're going to look at you in the context of your of your school not going to compare you to other students at other schools or other students at even at your school um, we're going to look at different trends is there did you start off freshman year a little rocky and then progressively um, get stronger and stronger or did you start off strong and then you started taking more academically rigorous classes so um, again we want to make sure that we know and then be sure to share in your application if there are any you know trends that you want us to know about if something important happened in your life or if you if something else outside of school was going on or even in school make sure we know about it because we, we need that context we need that framework that's important um, and then outside of that, and there are also other things that students can submit um, the, the essay students can let it submit letters of recommendation um, as well if they would like to do that. But those are both those are both going to be optional. So with the application process, what do we need? What do we need if, if all this stuff is optional? Um, again, so we need the application for admission. Um, so that online application, you can apply through our website directly through Spartan link. You can apply through the common application. We are members of the common application or CFNC. So really three ways um, that students can do that. Again, that's where we're going to get all of your um, your demographic information. Have you been at the same high school? What clubs and activities have you been involved with? Obviously, again, we know that that looks a little bit different right now. Have you had a job? That's where we're going to gather all that information. Um, we then do require the $65 application fee. Um, unfortunately, we do not participate in the CFNC free application week, um, but we do accept application fee waivers um, that students can can absolutely provide to us. And that's something your school counselor, you can work with them. I know that they'd be you know, happy to, to help you with that. That's something you qualify for. Um, so those are really the two things. In addition, the third thing that we have to have is going to be your official high school transcript. We want to make sure that, again, we have your overall are familiar with your academics, um, including AP and dual enrollment courses. So these are the three things we have to have, which you'll request that official transcript uh, from your school. The other things, again, are going to be optional. Test scores are going to be optional. Uh, essay is going to be optional and letters of recommendation. I do encourage you, though, to complete the essay. Um, you can see on this next slide we have um, some of our application deadlines. So for freshmen coming out of high school, just as you all are, um, this is something that that again, these are there's a lot going on here, lots of different dates. Um, but I, we have an early action deadline of December 1st. So I, I do encourage students to go ahead and and meet that early action deadline because that's going to give you the highest consideration uh, for admission, but also for scholarships. Um, if students complete 
the essay and um, they apply by December 1st, those two things, that's how you raise your hand and let us know uh, that you were interested in one of our blue and gold scholarships, which there have been students from Central Cabarrus who have been awarded um, that before, and I um, have worked with some of your counselors to come and surprise those students, so it's, it's fun for us, but also it's a huge, um, huge honor for students as well. So again, make sure that you apply by December 1st and complete that essay um, by December 1st. You'll see there's another um, early action, what we call deadline for January 15th, and that's going to be for students who may miss that December 1st deadline. Um, maybe you decide on December 5th that you are like, OK, actually, I do want to apply to UNCG. Then that you'll want to do apply before that deadline. So it really just depends on kind of the time of year. There's no benefit or, um, you know, there's no negative to applying really with any of these, just making sure you apply either by the December 1st or January 15th deadline. Um, I also want to mention a few other scholarship opportunities too. Um, again, we have our blue and gold scholarships, which are our merit based scholarships. Those are going to be, they are competitive and limited to a certain amount of students. But we also have, um, there's different ones called the, a Chancellor's Award, a Dean's Award, a Spartan's Award. Um, then there's also the, your financial need, which is going to be your state and federal um, aid too. So students are always like, okay, so we, you have all these opportunities. What's the best way to be considered for them? Um, the best way to, to receive the most scholarships or aid in out this process is to, is to apply before all the priority deadlines. So some of the scholarships are solely merit based, based off of your your GPA and your academics. Some are merit based based off of your grades and also a combination of need uh, demonstrated need from the FAFSA. Some are simply just need based aid. So again, the best way to be considered for the most opportunities are going to be submit your application by December 1st with the essay and also submit your FAFSA by January 15th. That's going to be that deadline for that. So as long as you do those two things, that is going to open up opportunities um, for you as, as a first year student coming into the university as far as scholarships. All right, I want to kind of open it up for some questions. Um, and I will I will stop sharing my screen. OK, perfect. Are there any questions that anyone has? I do. I'm going to provide a, a cool resource in the chat, too, um, that I appreciate about um, our website is that, again, these with all the majors, it is impossible to, to dig deep into uh, get familiar with all these specific areas. But we have a tool called uh, the Custom View Book which students can go on and, and create your own little link um, that helps you learn more. So let me make sure I can get that to you all. Um, and what you do is you go on here and you will create academic, create kind of your own view book. So if you click on that, it's going to ask you which specific areas that you're interested in academically. It's also going to ask you a little bit more about what your interests are outside of the classroom. Um, and then how, you know, just what you kind of want to know. So again, we want to make sure that that you're familiar with that. I'm actually going to pull that up so y'all can kind of see, visualize what that looks like. All right. So again, you're just if you click that link, um, you can go through here and click as many, many different things as you'd like. Um, if you're interested in business, you can go through any of these areas. You could select international business and marketing, maybe. Um, and then maybe you're like, OK, well, maybe nursing. That sounds good. Um, or if you're undecided, you're welcome to do exploratory, too. If you go to the next slide um, you, or to the next one, you also have opportunities to learn more about academic resources. Maybe you want to learn more about undergraduate research or the honors program or student safety or traditions. Um, then again, you can kind of go through again all these clubs and organizations. There are all different kinds of ones here. Um, and then when you click next, it'll ask you just to put in your information, kind of describing you as the student, and then boom, it'll collect that information and create this for you. So 
I think that this is uh, is helpful too because it it takes you know information as websites can be overwhelming and as I'm not getting to see you all in person and provide you different materials in your hand um, this is is great opportunity to be able to to share that information with you all too so be sure to utilize that resource um, and then that'll kind of help you narrow down and also when you select those specific major areas it also provides you like a example class or schedule with if you decide to you know major in that specific program what that would look like um, as well as the contact information to a faculty member so maybe you want to to ask a specific question then you're welcome to do that too so again i encourage you to to take a look at that link um, i know this is a lot of information um, but hopefully hopefully it'll help you all learn a little bit more about us yeah um, well, as students kind of maybe think about questions that they want to ask and, and put those in the chat or even unmute themselves and ask a question to Whitney, I do have a question for you. So I know you had said that um, test is optional this year, right? SAT, ACT is optional. Uh, students don't have to submit those scores to you for admissions. However, you said if they do, you'll look at them. Let me ask you this. Is there ever a time where you would recommend to a student, you really need to take the SAT? I need to see an SAT. Would you say that to anybody under any kind of circumstances? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, typically at this point in the in the application review process, we're going to focus on on the other components. We're going to look at, you know, the GPA. We're going to look at your essay. We're going to look at your trends and um, and if we have any specific questions, we will definitely reach out to the student. Um, but I would say, you know, really for students as this transition kind of took place so quickly with with the test optional, um, you know, I think of a student, there's not really a situation honestly where I can think of where I would say, hey, you need to take this again especially with UNCG for admissions purposes and for a lot of our secondary admissions requirements for specific programs or honors programs we're not looking at test scores for any of those but for some institutions some are still um, going to be considering uh, test scores in like scholarship review and all that kind of stuff so specifically for UNCG um, again if if you submit them to us we will see that they are there um, and that but that's something that it's not going to to really make or break a student's in uh, app admissions to UNCG. So I think if students are, are nervous about those scores or don't feel good about them, then I would just encourage you to to not send those scores. Okay. But again, if you feel like you're in in our averages and you think that that's something that OK, my you know, my GPA is here and I think that I'm within the averages, I think that that would help boost, you know, that um and again so because this happened so so quickly some students who took like the act at their school last february or march went ahead and got them sent to us so i never want students to think they'll be penalized for that score because um you likely didn't have the opportunity to take it again or if you did then it's like right now where you're applying and going through all this stuff so um again i yeah. we're going to focus more more on that gpa mm -hmm. Any questions, guys? I must have answered them all. <laughs> I mean, your your presentation was very thorough. I mean, I had a kind of a, I make a little list of things that I'm wondering if you'll talk about, and you talked about everything. So it was uh, very comprehensive. I guess the highlight um, would be. You know, you mentioned the deadline, December 1 is really the kind of the next deadline. Kids know about the, the you know, these next two weeks, last week and this coming week are the college application weeks in CFNC. We've been pushing that really hard and um, we're available. I guess this is a commercial, you know, for our seniors that we're available and, and you can make an appointment with your counselor if you want to meet with them one on one and kind of talk about college stuff and application stuff and FAFSA, whatever you want to talk about. We're definitely available to make appointments to do that. So, yeah, I think that's, you know, kind of a, a big thing too is like students making sure, like, 
you're utilizing your school counselors and people like me from different schools that you're interested in. I mean, our literally our job is to kind of help you navigate this process and to help you learn more and just to see if UNCG is a good fit. I mean, starting from the very beginning, that's something um, that again, and, and you know, your school counselors and I are kind of a, in a partnership here to help you figure out where you need to be. So as you discover and, and learn a little bit more, make sure you're you're utilizing them and people like me. If you have general questions, that's that's what we're here for. And I'm going to put my email in the chat. Um, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, so if they're thinking about I might have a question later, how could they reach? And if they can, they reach out to you or you know, absolutely so they can. Yeah, absolutely. And even for students, I mean, again, so many students are at different points in the process. Some are like just starting the college search process being like, OK, I'm actually going to do this. You know, some students have been looking for a long time and are very familiar with school. So again, just the communication is key at this point um, in the process. So we want to make sure if even, you know, if UNCG is somewhere that you're you're looking for, um, you know, different experiences, reach out to me to see if those are opportunities that are available or use these custom view book links and go to our um, admissions page we have we're in the midst of a, a virtual open house right now for literally the next i guess this was week two um we have one more week but all of the recordings of all of those so all of like deans from the departments have been um presenting and honors college financial aid um, our financial aid office is doing a a um kind of big outreach within the month of of uh, October every Thursday they're doing like a Facebook live so um, that's the thing it's just more than ever you have opportunities for virtual access to schools so utilize people like me who can um, who can help you figure this all out because it's it's ever changing and um, even different than it was last year so we're we're definitely all learning together and want to help y'all yeah well um I guess we'll give it another minute or so, but I really I do want to thank you. I know you you come out to Central often and make yourself available to our kids. And um, I think Greensboro, I mean, I just this, I guess one thing that stood out to me in your presentation was the size of your school. It you know, you have your Charlotte and your state who kind of compete with each other to be like the biggest university in the system. Um, but how does that compare? I know that Greensboro is nowhere near as large as Charlotte or or, or a state. How, how does it compare? Yeah, so we're kind of like that. We're like a medium large institution. We're like right in the middle of that. And so with 20,000 students, like, and we're kind of right where we want to be as far as enrollment. Um, this is kind of that. We're at that kind of sweet spot as far as we want to maintain kind of that larger feeling, um, but then also those small, you know, smaller resources too. And I think it's important to note too that, um, you know, even though we have 20,000 students, that also 16 are going to be undergraduate students. Um, and even some of that population are going to be online students. So I think for, for students coming to our campus, even though 20,000 sounds like a lot, I don't think that it's something that you feel uh, overwhelmed by any means um, because they're you know some students are you're not all in class at the same time you're not moving around campus at the same time some students are solely online um, and so that's something that that is unique but you know compared to yeah some of the larger school systems and that's you know within our state we have some UNC system schools that are you know five to six thousand and then some that are up to like forty thousand so we're like kind of right in that in that middle and we're kind of where we want to be enrollment wise. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, Greensboro is kind of that like perfect school that a lot of students, they don't want to be, I don't want to go to Charlotte, it's too close. And then then they look way down the road over at Chapel Hill and State and there's a, and you're missing, you're missing it. It's right up the road. It's, it's, yes. uh, it's an hour away. Yeah. Exactly. We're like far enough, but close enough. And I think that's the thing, too, is as you start, you know, becoming familiar with different cities in North Carolina, um, you know, make sure you Greensboro is a cool it's it's a really cool place. And I think that, you know, it's going to be 
not as much traffic as like your Charlotte or Raleigh, but it's still a major city in North Carolina. So, um, and all around there in the triad, you have, you know, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point, kind of this triad area. Um, there are a lot of other institutions right here too. So you find that there are a lot of that college age group right here. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out as you're learning more about different cities and different institutions. That's, that's definitely a way to do it. Well, that's fun. I don't see any more chatted questions. And if anybody wants to unmute, they're welcome to do that. But I think we'll go ahead and wrap up with Whitney. Okay. I appreciate y'all coming. I just want to say thank you so much and um, for helping me, all the counselors helping me get this scheduled. And uh, students, please, if there's any questions that I can help you with as you navigate all of this, please let me know. Yeah, and then let's do this again in the spring. Huh? We'll meet with June. Yeah. Absolutely. Way. That'd be great. I'm happy to do it. All right. Whitney, thank you very thank much for yeah, you are welcome. Thank y'all so much. I hope everybody has a good weekend. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Take care, Whitney. All right. Bye.